Let's get back to the story we brought you earlier this hour. Emails showing EPA officials who themselves were former green lobbyists, who themselves were appointed by President Obama to the EPA, well, they were working to bankrupt the coal industry. All rise, Judge Andrew Napolitano is here. This is a runaway bureaucracy. That's, that's my opinion, by the way. I want you to tell us if and how you can rein it in. Well, I share that opinion. And, and the reason it is a runaway bureaucracy is not because of Barack Obama or George W. Bush or Bill Clinton, but Richard Nixon. Because Richard Nixon was the progenitor of the EPA, and the basic rules were established then. And those basic rules are, it's an administrative agency. It's not in the executive branch. It's not in the legislative branch. It's not in the judicial branch. And the president gets to appoint his people to it. And they get to write the regulations that regulate the behavior of corporations and private individuals. And those regulations stand unless disturbed by the courts or by both houses of Congress. So, the answer to your question might not be a far-fetched one. If the Republicans take control of the Senate this November, then the Congress can, by a simple majority vote in both houses, invalidate any regulation of the EPA. Oh, so they could go back and say, what you're doing to coal is wrong, yes. and it is repeal. Yes, you exactly. Yes. Yeah. Well, no, they can't repeal no, regulations repeal. that are already in place. They can repeal regulations when they're in the 30 day, 30 day proposal period. So the EPA proposes a regulation. They publish it. The industry looks at it. They send lobbyists to Congress. Members of Congress look at it. Well, I'm not going to touch this. It's too hot for me. Or we're going to lose. We're Republicans and we're in the Senate. But in that 30 day period, if both houses of Congress voted to invalidate the proposed res regulation, it never becomes law. So you've got to get both houses of Congress in that 30-day window yes. to really rein yes. in the EPA. Or elect a president whose views on the ability of the government to regulate the environment are a little bit more sensitive to things like coal. Okay. But, but you're not really going to change the basic structure of the EPA because the Republicans want to get their guys in. Sure. And the Democrats want to get their guys. Uh, uh, and they each think that they're going to get their guy in the White House and then their guys in the EPA. You could say there's nothing wrong with that. And that's the way the political system works. That's the way pressure groups exert pressure and create policy. Yes, you except could say the that's EPA, the way it's supposed to be. Yes, except the EPA, just like the FDA, Food and Drug Administration, in, in the FDR years, or in the Woodrow Wilson years, the EPA was sold on the Congress and on the public with the following argument. These will be experts on the environment, they will be neutral and non-political. Baloney! They're hardly neutral and they're hardly non-political. They are either, you know, uber environmentalists or uber will let the free market take care of it. If the EPA was staffed by former oil company executives, oh, you, you, well, you'd be happy, but you'd hear the you'd Not hear the le you'd hear the left howling, howling in, in I, the well, streets. I tell you what, I would really like. I would really like to go back to stage one, where you employed experts to keep the air clean, to keep the rivers clean, well, the to keep e the water safe. The EPA will say it does do that, and in fact, it does employ experts. It has a huge bureaucracy of people that are always there, no matter who's the president. But, but the people who run the EPA, who are political appointees, who frequently have contributed to the person that ultimately becomes the president and appoints them, can move the EPA in a strong environmental sure. direction, sure. in a strong free market direction. Did you so know? we're stuck with this until... Uh, uh, January at the latest. I don't think this is earliest. news to you, but I am going to inform you and our viewers. Today is Constitution Day. Yes, today is the anniversary of the adoption, the ratification of the Constitution of the United States. I'm particularly happy to see you smiling about that. This is the document that, of course, continued the legitimation of our secession from Great Britain. So you know, like a, Scotland yeah, wants yeah, to do tomorrow. Say, right. So but you want to see Scotland recede, rece whatever the word is. I want, I, I want Scotland to do what the Scots want to do, whatever the outcome. Uh -huh. But let me tell you about this Constitution Day. Uh -huh. Every law school... If there had been a free vote in the United States of America, that would have been the colonies of America. If there had been a free vote for or against George III, 
Would you say it would have been for oh George the Third? So you would let then, the Americans do what they wanted to do? If I had been around then, I would have been with Sam Adams and the most radical of the uh, colonists to to try and hang George the Third. Oh, but but oh, be that as it may, regicide. I know. I'm, I'm saying that to to get your blood pressure going. Dear Lord, every law school in the country that receives federal funds is required to honor Constitution Day by having constitutional scholars discuss aspects of the Constitution and the Supreme Court. And you have a dossier with you, so you're going to address a law I'm, school I'm today. about to give this lecture uh, in Brooklyn, New York in about uh, 45 minutes. Uh, no, tell me it ain't so. You don't script a speech. Oh, no, no. These are the two opinions that I'm discussing. Oh, thank Hobby you. Lobby and Town of Greece. Two, two opinions it. involving uh, the First Amendment. You cannot script a speech. I'm entirely with you. off the cuff. I'm it's entirely gone. with you. Most, you most academics are not with us on that. I'm entirely with you. It's well, nice see. to agree with you. Incredible, is it? Yeah. <laughs> don't bring the Queen into this, all right? I, Be quiet. I won't. <laughs> thank you very much. You don't trust me. <laughs> Thanks, Judge.